In this video, I'm going to walk you through the steps that you would go through to search the Uniprot database to find information about uh, a protein that you might be interested in. This is uh, something that you're asked to do for the second lab, uh, the protein electrophoresis lab. So the Uniprot database, you can access you can access it through this URL. It's given to you in your lab handout. It's an incredibly useful database. It has tons and tons of information about uh, proteins and their biological functions and their structures. Um, so I wanted you to have a little bit of familiarity with how to use this because it is such a useful resource. Um, so I'm going to walk you through the process of how to search the database for a particular protein. In the lab handout, you're asked to search for human actin and myosin proteins, but I'm going to show you how it works uh, using a different protein, one that we talked about in the lecture video, which is hexokinase. So you input the, the name of the protein that you want to search for uh, up here in this search window, and I know that the hexokinase protein that I'm interested in has um, a protein symbol of H. HK1. You could also just type the name hexokinase in here if that's what you wanted to do um, and say search. And what you get is this big giant table uh, that lists lots of different hexokinase proteins and related proteins in lots of different organisms you can see down here in the, in the column at right. The next column over will actually tell you the length of the protein, so how many amino acids are in these proteins. And you can see there's quite a wide uh, variety depending on which protein you're looking at. So I specifically want to look at hexokinase 1 from human. So I don't want this first one, that's mouse, I want the second one. So I'm going to click on the Uniprot entry name here. And when I do that, it pulls up the specific entry for hexokinase 1 in human. Um, and you can either navigate through this information by just scrolling or by using the um, menu here at the left to jump to what specific information you're looking for. Um, now, we already determined uh, the length of the protein that was listed in that first table. I showed you that. Um, so if you wanted to identify other information about the structure of these proteins specifically, uh, you might jump down here to structure. Um, there are lots of other uh, bits of information that, that you could get uh, through this entry. And I just, I'm just, I'm just going to scroll so that you can kind of see uh, how much useful information you get from the Uniprot database. So this is just describing positions along the protein and uh, functions that that uh, particular site in the protein is associated with. Um, actually, I should have started up here, which is a description of the function of the protein. As we talked about in the video, uh, this is an enzyme. It's a biological catalyst, uh, and the specific reaction that it catalyzes is binding to these two substrates, ATP and the hexosugar glucose, and transferring a phosphate from ATP to that sugar, giving us the products ADP and a phosphorylated uh, sugar, right? And so it also gives you uh, some biological context for, for what, where that reaction would be happening uh, and why. Um, and so, uh, again, binding sites, important regions of the protein, important functions associated with the protein um, at the molecular level and in a larger biological context, um, links to other resources. This gives you the species and taxonomic lineage, um, tells you where in the cell this protein is expressed, uh, it gives you some information about pathology. So are there di diseases associated with mutations in this enzyme? And yes, there are. There are um, uh, peripheral neuropathies and um, uh, anemias that are associated with hexokinase deficiency. And you can see um, lists of here of those d diseases and links to uh, other databases that would have more information about them. Um, and we can see here uh, amino acid modification. So as we talked about, often amino acids get covalently modified, and in this particular enzyme we see uh, at position number one acetylation that happens, um, and then on uh, position number 337 in the protein we see a, a phosphorylation that happens to modify those specific amino acids. And scrolling down we can see more information about uh, the expression of this protein, um, 
what other proteins it might interact with. And then finally we get down here to structure, which is going to give us more structural information about, about the amino acid sequence and the protein and secondary structures and overall tertiary structures that we might be interested in. So we can see here uh, a diagram that uh, depicts the types of secondary structure that are present. Uh, we see alpha helices, we see beta strands, we see uh, turns. And here we can actually access 3D structures that are going to show us this uh, polypeptides uh, secondary and tertiary structure in, um, in um, three dimensions. So um, you can choose whatever database you want. I usually choose the uh, RCSB protein database. Um, and then when you click on these links, that's going to take you to individual entries that show structures determined, in this case by X-ray crystallography. Um, and it's going to show you what that hexokinase protein looks like. So if I click on that entry, here I am at RCSB Protein Databank, and this is you know, a central repository for structural information. People publish papers and, and in which they've determined structures of proteins, and they upload that to the database. Um, and again, really useful, uh, gives you lots of information, but specifically uh, focused on pro uh, protein structure. It also has other types of biomolecules, not just protein, I should make that clear. Um, and we'll, we'll use the PDB a lot in the class uh, when, when we're talking about protein structures. So this just gives you a nice view. You can already see um, some uh, secondary structures. Hopefully you can see uh, these alpha helices like we talked about before. You can also see these arrows which represent beta strands. You can, you can um, uh, choose to go to a 3D viewer. Now, if you choose JSMOL, that's a JavaScript-based 3D viewer. And depending on your security settings, you may or may not be able to, to use that on my home computer. Uh, I can use that, and it gives you a really nice 3D structural view. Um, but if your security settings, if you're on a campus computer, for example, are stringent, you're not going to be able to use this as a, as a JavaScript-based applet. Um, so you'll want to use PV instead, which is not as pretty, uh, but gives us uh, the same sorts of information. Um, and so this is a structural view of that hexokinase enzyme. What these uh, uh, lines are representing is, are the axes of symmetry. Um, and you can leave those in there or you can get rid of them. You can turn this uh, molecule in all three dimensions to really get a, a nice view of it. Um, and you can change how it's colored. You can change the view that you have here. So this is cartoon. I could change it to just the backbone if I only wanted to see that NCC, NCC backbone. Uh, I could do space filling if I wanted the overall three-dimensional three -dimensional structure, which we can see is, is globular. Um, I'm going to go back to cartoon, and I'm going to change the coloring so that it's actually going to be coloring by secondary structures. So here, uh, alpha helices are... Uh, illustrated in purple and the beta strands and beta sheets in green and this makes it really really easy to see uh, how those secondary structures fold back on themselves. So uh, you're going to be doing the same uh, sort of investigation but focused on actin and myosin. So again beginning at the Uniprot database uh, and working your way through all that useful information and then ultimately looking at the structures.